What's up guys, Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and today we're talking about how to shoot, edit, and export videos on an iPhone. So first things first, everything you're seeing here was shot, edited, and exported from my iPhone X using the brand new Adobe Premiere Rush, which is Adobe's version of a mobile video editor. Before we get started, here's a quick behind the scenes shot of my setup. I've got the iPhone on a tripod in front of me with a Parrot teleprompter right above it. And I'll give you a link to the tripod I'm using down in the description below. My main key light is an Aperture 120D bouncing off the wall next to me. And of course, I've got a lamp and a window behind me. The only thing that is not being done on the iPhone right now is the audio because I don't have a microphone that connects to my iPhone, but it can be done. You just need an adapter to plug in a microphone to the lightning port on your phone, which I don't have, but you get the idea. Now there's a lot of other mobile video editing apps out there on the App Store, and even Adobe has had a mobile version of Premiere Pro prior to this one, and they've all been pretty basic editing solutions and missing a lot of features. But this new version of Premiere Rush is actually a pretty robust solution in all the features that it gives you. Plus, if you're already a Premiere Pro user, a lot of the interface will already feel familiar to you since it's basically just a simplified version of Premiere Pro. So anyway, let's do a quick rundown of how to use the app and how I shot, edited, and exported this video all from an iPhone using Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, first, when you go into the app and open up the main screen, you're gonna tap on the plus sign at the bottom to create a new project. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna add media from your camera roll or from the cloud, or just start off by shooting a video for your project. And this is the cool thing about this app, is that it actually has a built-in camera for shooting videos right within the app, and it's a lot more powerful than the stock camera app that comes with the iPhone. When you go into the camera, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you switch the camera from auto to pro. This way you'll always get the advanced features for setting up the shot just how you want it. At the top left of the screen, there's an X that will quit out of the camera, a grid button to turn on the grid, a flash for photography, and a flashlight for continuous video lighting. I'll leave both of these off. Now at the bottom is where the real magic happens. First, click on the exposure button and turn auto exposure off. Now you have control of your ISO and shutter speed. You wanna set your shutter speed to 1 48th of a second in order to get the most cinematic motion, and then set your ISO as low as possible to get the right exposure. There's even a small exposure meter at the bottom which will help you to get the right exposure. As a general rule of thumb, you want your exposure meter to read somewhere close to zero. Next, we'll skip over to the white balance tab and turn off auto white balance. Now you can make adjustments to your color temperature and tint to make the image look exactly like you want. If you're not really sure what to do here, alternatively, you can just turn on auto white balance while pointing the camera at your subject. Then once it finishes adjusting, turn it off again to lock in the color. That way it won't be changing automatically on you in the middle of your shot. These last two icons will allow you to change the focus and the zoom on the camera. The focus I'm gonna leave at autofocus because we'll set it later, and the zoom I'll leave at one since it's a digital zoom rather than optical and doesn't look as good zoomed in. Now go over to the very last tab and this is where we'll set our resolution and frame rate. For this video, I'll set it to 4K and set my frame rate to 24 frames per second. Now, if you're just starting out and you don't wanna worry about setting all of these settings manually, you can also use this circle on the screen to adjust your exposure to whatever spot you put it on and the square to set your focus to whatever you put it on. Then you can tap on each one of them to lock them in for the shot. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the camera. Go ahead and hit the record button to start recording. When you're done recording all of your clips, a blue circle with a check mark and a number will appear indicating how many clips you've recorded. Tap on that and all of your clips will be imported into a new project for you. Now once you're inside the project window, the main editing interface is pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of neat tricks that Adobe has added into the software that I think set it apart from other mobile editing apps. To start off, the blue plus sign will allow you to add media to your timeline, either by capturing it in the camera, adding a title, pulling something from your camera roll, or even recording audio straight into the timeline. The next button brings up the project manager, which will show you all the media you're working with in your project. The app keeps track of all of your files so you can select them and add them to your project without having to import them again. Now, once you have a file selected, you can tap and hold on the clip and pull up the previewer and use the buttons on the bottom left to delete the clip or create a new sequence based on the clip. Or you can tap the add button on the right to add the clip to your current sequence. Now, back in the project window, the next button on the toolbar brings up the track view. From here, you can lock, mute, or hide specific tracks, and even start recording audio right into the timeline. The next button over allows you to change your project between landscape, portrait, or square mode, depending on the type of video you're shooting. Next, we'll move on to the editing toolbar. The first button is for editing titles. First, tap on the blue plus button to add a new title to your video, then scroll through the options to find the style you like. 
Now, once you've selected a title style, switch over to the edit tab where you can change the font style, size, color, and a bunch of other options on the text. Next up is the transitions tool, which is just what you would think. Simply select the clip and then hit the transitions button to add a cross dissolve, dip to black or dip to white transition to your clip. You can also go into the edit tab to change the duration of the transition. Next, we'll go over to the color tool, which I think is one of the coolest parts about this app. Having this kind of flexibility with your video right from within the app is super powerful. So first up, you'll see a built-in presets page where you can choose a preset or a filter to apply to your footage to see what it looks like. Then down below, you can adjust the intensity of the filter to change how strong it looks on the image. Now, these are just a starting point, and if you wanna make any changes to your filter, you can go over to the Edit tab, and you have a full suite of color tools available to get your image looking just like you want. You can adjust the temperature, the tint, the vibrance, saturation, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and even some more advanced tools like a faded film effect, sharpening, and vignette. This is really powerful stuff coming from an app like this, and once again, if you already use Premiere Pro, you'll feel right at home here. There's even an on and off button at the top so you can see what the image looks like before and after your edits. The next tool is the audio editor where you can adjust the volume of your audio and if you tap change type down below, you can even access more advanced tools like auto volume, auto ducking, cleaning up background noise and echo, and a speech enhancer. The last editing tool is the transform tab where you can change the position, scale, rotation, opacity, and even the crop of your clips. You can also adjust the size and rotation of your clips by simply tapping on the image and then pinching your fingers to change it. The tools on the far right of the editing toolbar are for cutting a clip, duplicating a clip, or deleting a clip. You can also choose to show the audio file along with the clip or select multiple clips at once using the button with an arrow and a plus sign. So there's a quick rundown of editing within Adobe Premiere Rush. Now when you're done with your edit, tap the share button at the top of the screen to bring up the export window. Now all I have to do is set my quality setting to 1080p, match frame rate, and then tap export to save the final video into my camera roll. And once it's finished rendering, I can tap on the YouTube logo and the app will let me upload the video directly to my YouTube account. And that's it. So there you have it. That's how you can create an entire video shooting, editing, and exporting with just one app on your iPhone. If you like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. It really helps support the channel and helps me to create more content like this down the road. And if you're interested in learning more about how to create more cinematic looking videos, no matter what type of camera you're shooting on, check out my free ultimate camera settings cheat sheet down below in the description box. Anyway, that's all for now. We'll see you on the next one.